Don't worry, I'm no enemy. I'm Kevin Graham of the Septian Church. You're Agate Krosner and Annalise Elfied, right? I don't suppose you'd be up for swapping some stories, would you? Welcome back, my adoring public, to more Trails in the Sky second chapter. Pharaoh Fiasco here. Last episode, we finished up uh, our investigation at Gransel Castle, and now we've only got the liberal news left to tackle. Um, we found out that Ren's parents, I don't know, dude, it sounds like there was something a little, uh, little fishy, a little interesting up with them, something mind controlly. Evening already. Time does fly when you are having fun. The only letter victim we've yet to visit is liberal news. Yep. Well, let's not waste any more time, eh? Let's get over there and see what's what. Is it gonna take us directly there? Nope, okay. But, okay, Gransel Castle we are unable to go back to. Which makes sense, I guess. Alright. So, uh, Sherizard, she's probably nearing the end of her investigation as well. But, now that we're in evening, we're gonna do the usual. Run really quickly past the, uh, past here. Make sure there's nothing that's, uh, happened in the meantime. Nope, okay, nothing new. And... Hopefully the liberal news... Well, whatever's about to happen here is gonna be much wilder than anything else, I'm sure. Especially if it's last up. Or I guess we... We have the complete option of investigating this place first, so probably nothing. And up we go. The Imperial Ambassador and the Republic Ambassador. I've interviewed both of them. They're pretty weird if you ask me. They never talk about the important things. Especially Ambassador Cranov of the Empire. His comments were absolutely unprintable. They've... I'm sure they've, they're they seasoned against this sort of thing. Oh, Estelle. Hey, Chief. It's been a while. What do you need today, hmm? Business with Nile? Yeah, got some questions on some guild business. Is he back from Ruan yet? Yep, he should be in the office. Really now? I think I saw him go up to the reference room. Hey! If you're looking for Niall, he should be in the upstairs reference room. Finally sent it off to press. Gonna get something delicious to eat at the cafe and regain some of my fighting spirit. Hey, Niall! There he is! Hey, Niall! Hello! Who in the hell? Well, what do you know? You guys, how you doing? Good day, Niall. Well, pardon our intrusion. Oh, it's that bod guy. And, um, your highness. A uh, good day to you, yeah. You even have Zane the Immovable of Calvin with you. You got some kind of gang going here, Estelle? <laughs> A lot of stuff's happened since we last met. How'd your coverage of the election in Ruan go? Damn well, that's how. Got the article done thanks in part to you guys. Speaking of, what brings you by today? Got a hot scoop for your old buddy, Niall? Well, actually, we're the ones who'd like to know something. We heard the liberal news received a threatening letter. You guys were investigating that thing? I figured the military would have been taking care of that one. We're working on requests from the military, actually. So, do you know anything? Well, I just got back to the capital, so I don't know much. To be honest, I'd like to hear what you guys know, if anything. That's real helpful, Niall. Come now, you're a newsman, a hound for a good story. Surely you must have a clue as to who our villain is. Tch, I don't have time for this. Um, that's a bit impolite, you two. Niall, I know this is a lot to ask. But please, if you know anything at all, share it with us. Please. Whoa, hey, your highness. You don't need to lower your head to me. For crying... Fine, fine. Okay, so, this is off the record, but we ain't the only ones who got a letter. Not even close. Okay, so Niall's intel is all kinds of old. Layston Fortress got one. Then the Cathedral, the Airship Company, the Hotel Rowanbaum. And then both embassies, Gransel Castle and the Irby Royal Villa all got one too. There were nine letters in total. Huh? Something wrong? Dude, <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're like, that's so old, we're all growing gray hairs. <laughs> uh, 
Niall. We heard that from the military already. What? Damn it! That was my big scoop for the day! Doesn't look like we're going to get much out of this. Yeah, time to move on, I think. Now you wait just one second, Missy. You keep talking like that and Niall Burns, star reporter for the Liberal News, is going to have a name with a pile of crap. All right, all right. Let me let you in on my take of this whole mess. Well, okay. Huh, you may want to be brief, Mr. Burns. Fine, listen up. Here's the short of it. My gut tells me this is some kind of huge prank. The threats aren't real. We thought of that too. You sound awfully sure though. Mind telling us why you're so convinced? Okay, trick is, I've covered terrorist threats like this before, right? But with this, there's no reality to the threat. Threats only work and have power if they describe or at least imply something nasty that's gonna happen, see? These letters have exactly none of that. Mr. Burns does have a point. Disaster will be visited upon you does not offer much in the way of a specific terror. Exactly. I've got a hunch this isn't about stopping the signing ceremony at all. This is more about getting people worked up over a threat and then sitting back and watching the fireworks. I see. That's kind of a good point. There is some sense behind it. I'm still bothered by the fact that so many letters were sent though. And each and every one was sent to a place involved with the ceremony. Yes, for a prank, whoever did this seems to know a lot about what's happening. That does seem kind of true, on the surface. Think about it though, all that info will be pretty easy to find with a little digging. Hell, I knew about those places weeks ago. Anyway, I'm gonna be working this on the assumption that it's a prank. Maybe you guys should stick to your guns about it being a real threat, and we can compare notes later, eh? Yeah, good idea. Thanks, Niall. That actually helped a lot. Darn right it did. Just stop by if you want to swap stories. I'll be sitting around here until the pact's signed. Okay. Oh, speaking of sitting around here, I don't see Dorothy anywhere, thank God. Ah, uh, right. She's off work in the Bose region. I sent her to snag some photos. What, for a special of some kind? Yeah, related to the Royal Army. You remember that old fort at the sky, uh, old fort the Sky Bandits were using as a base, right? The one you guys busted? The army decided those rats had the right idea and have claimed and repurposed it as a training facility. They're running airship pilot training out of there now. Oh, okay, neat. So she went off to get coverage off the base then. That's the idea, yeah. I was a little worried about sending her out on her own, but gotta do it sometime. Dorothy out on, our, uh, out on our own, huh? Scary. Oh, wait. Duh, speaking of girls out on their own. Uh, what's up? Estelle explained the situation with Ren's parents. Harold Hayworth, the traitor from Crossbell. Hmm, never heard of the guy. Pretty sure he's never been in our classifieds, or our wanted column either. Figures. But hey, this is part of the job, right? If you guys are totally stuck, I'll help you out. We can put him up in the classifieds if you want. I even have a few people in Crossbell I could poke. Thanks, Niall! <laughs> You're way more reliable than I thought you'd be. I think I need to upgrade my opinion of you. Ha, huh, of course you do. Wait a minute, what do you mean? Was I not reliable before? <laughs> Just kidding. All right, let's get back to the Guildhouse then. Sherizard should be back by now. Hopefully, yes. Thank you again, Niall. Eh, it was no big. Come by again anytime. Alright, so we've got our info from Niall Burns. I spent all day walking around, but I got a big load of nothing. I hope Dorothy managed to find something. Probably... Well, I don't know. The Bulls region might be ripe with controversy right now for whatever reason. I'm sure it'll be by the time we get there. But for now, let's go ahead and have Elnon pat us on the head for uh, doing such a good job. And man, we need some more BP, dude. I'm looking forward to machine power. Oh, the Fisherman's Guild. Might as well. We plan on closing early today and heading out to Valeria Lake. Personally, I'm aiming for some sweet Kasagin. Uh... 
Who's the... I think it might be that guy, Percy. Beginners brought along on practice often get seasick. The best counter plan is to get plenty of sleep. It's also best not to eat too much before getting aboard the boat. People who have just started fishing often get bogged down with advanced preparations and don't get enough sleep. Hmm, that... honestly? Fishing does sound like a lot of upfront investment, so... Oh no, it's almost evening! To not be fishing right now is a waste! Oh, I guess we haven't done enough fishing to earn any new titles then. Oh well. Grand Soul Bracer Guild, we do want to save right before we head in there. Uh, let's do so over... this one. Alright. We're back! Oh, I never talked to, uh, those two at the department store. Sherazard's here. Welcome back. Sorry, I know we're a bit late. Hey, where are Tina and Ren? They returned just before you did. I believe they're enjoying the spoils of a hard-fought shopping campaign on the second floor. Sounds like they had fun. Anyway, we've got a lot to report. Yes, please. Alright. And then we'll pick Sherazard's brain too. I see. Sounds like you had a fairly productive day then. I guess. We didn't get anything decisive though. Shara, did you find anything? I managed to find a very large pile of nothing. The hotel, the cathedral, the airship company. No one had even the slightest clue as to who would send such letters. The leader of the airship company is deathly afraid the sender might demand money next. There haven't been any follow-up letters though, to anyone. Damn. Doesn't really narrow things down much. How likely do you think it is the society's behind all this? I don't think we can safely say that at this point. Their primary focus up till now has been experimenting with those bizarre gospel ornaments they possess. And we know that the gospels can create phenomena otherwise unimaginable. Those devices certainly haven't shown an ability to create threatening letters from Noah, however. Yeah, this doesn't really seem like it matches the society's M.O. Huh. I guess Ruan and Zeiss just have me on edge. No, it's perfectly understandable. Regardless, I think we can safely say we've done our part. I'll compile all your testimonies into a report. Could I ask you to deliver it to Colonel Sid at the Irby Royal Villa tomorrow? Sure. We didn't find the sender in the end, so I feel kind of bad, but I guess it's all we can do. Oh, Irby! Right! Uh, Shara, did you find anything out about Ren? I did have some results on that end, though not in the way I expected. Let me start with the hotel. The Haywards, all three of them, definitely stayed there for about two weeks. They kept the same room for the entire time, in a fairly typical tourist fashion. Huh. So they were here before heading over to the villa. It was only just this morning that they checked out. Okay. I then visited the cathedral. It seems the Haywards came to worship a number of times while they were here. However, the father who ministered to them said he felt there was something off about their behavior, which matches up to Hilda's impression of them too, that they seemed distracted during prayer specifically. That would match what Miss Hilda said. Yeah. And finally, the airship company. That's where things got very strange. Strange? How so? Their names are Harold, Sophia, and Ren Hayworth from Crossbell, yes? There are no records of anyone matching those names nor that nationality, and the records go back six months. That... That's suspect of the highest order, dude. No way, but... That is a mystery. Though perhaps they traveled by land? Uh, did Ren come to Liberal by land? No, because we met her at the water... We met her at the waterfall, didn't we? They couldn't have come through those gates, they were monster infested. Wait a minute, that can't be right. When we first met her, she was talking about landing in an airship. Oh, I didn't remember that detail at all. I just remembered they were at a military installation and probably didn't fly there. Yes, at Air Letton. She said she saw a lake on the way down. Hmm, troubling. It's possible they were traveling under assumed names. Assumed names? Why would they? They must have had something to hide, or they may have been hiding from someone. 
Either way, they must have known something was wrong before they set out. <sighs> I've contacted every single guild branch in the country about Ren's parents. For the moment, all we can do is wait for more information to come in. As for Ren herself, I think it would be best if she stayed in the care of the guild for now. Yeah, I'd feel terrible if she got wrapped up in something. Could you leave her with me, maybe? The mission kind of feels personal now. I was going to suggest that, actually. Thank you. The guild will pay for everyone's lodgings while you're in Gransel, naturally. That includes Ren, so don't worry. Thanks, Elnon. Oh, wait, speaking of staying the night, we might not actually need that tonight. You see... Estelle told Cher about the invitation to stay at the castle. My, that's quite an invitation. It is. Honestly, I'd absolutely love to stay there again, but... I'm afraid I'll need to decline this time. What could Sherazard possibly have set up counter to that? It'll be far easier for the guild to reach at least one of us at the hotel. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. You might hear something about Ren's parents. I guess I should stay at the hotel too, then. Sorry, Chloe. <laughs> no, don't worry. I'll explain the situation to Hilda. I'm sure she won't mind. Zine and I are to stay at our respective embassies. The princess shall retire to her castle, naturally. So that means you two and the girls will be staying at the hotel, then? Hmm. Parting on these terms would be dreadfully dull. Since we're all together this evening, shall we enjoy a nice dinner at the bar? Good idea! And, you know, I'd actually like to hear you play the piano again, Olivier. It's been a while. Ah, oh, sweet maiden, you know just how to pluck my heartstrings. Have you come to appreciate a mature flavor at last, I wonder? I'm going to snap those hard strings if you keep it up. Snapping or no, we should get going. With a group this large, it could be hard to find seating. Alright, let's call the girls and be off. Yeah, there are seven of us. That evening, Estelle's group and Ren had dinner at the Sunny Bell Inn. Olivier, as if it were second nature, took to the piano after a few drinks. Ultimately, even Mueller and Niall were called to come and join, and so passed a pleasant evening in Gransel. Nice. Nothing wild happened, at least nothing outwardly wild. And here we all are. Okay, let's split up here then. Chloe, be careful on your way home. <laughs> it's not that far. I think I'll be fine in the capital. Huh? Miss Chloe, you live in Gransel? Um, yes, I do. I'll be staying at my grandmother's house. Well, if you'll pardon me. Have a good night, Chloe. Good night, Chloe! I mean, she didn't lie. She is staying at her grandmother's place. Wow, that was one heck of a party. Olivia even dragged poor Mueller into it. And who was it that dragged poor Mr. Burns into it all, hmm? Not that he seemed to mind. <laughs> well, I figured, what the heck? Ren, did you have fun? <laughs> yeah, yeah I did. The food was good and everyone was talking about neat stuff. The piano music was really pretty too. Yeah, Olivier is really good at it. I was kind of surprised. Well, he's not all hot air when he calls himself a traveling performer, I guess. Sure, uh, sure you want to duck out already, Shara? Zine and the others are still having a lot of fun. Professional courtesy, Estelle. If I stayed, you'd know I'd just drink them under the table. Since we do have work tomorrow, I thought I'd cut out early and spare them the pain. Fair enough. Let's go get our hotel rooms, then. Okay, so... If something happens, we've got at least three party members, so it's not all bad, I guess. But we're probably good for the night. Pardon, are you the braces and company we were expecting? Forgive me, but we were unable to secure a four-person room for you. Huh? How unprofessional, Fritz! Would you be willing to accept a pair of two-person rooms? Oh, sure! How do you want to split them up, Shara? We're obviously going to end up with Ren. I'm fine with any arrangement. Set it up however you please. I want to be with Mrs. Stell. Dude, I don't know. Like, I feel like... Uh, I feel like there's something really, really weird about Ren. You've been busy with work, so we haven't had any time to talk at all. 
It's not fair, Ren. I wanted to be with Estelle too. Then you should have said so sooner, Slowpoke. I know, what if all three of us stayed in the same room? We could share a bed. No way, uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> I'll let you borrow Estelle for tonight, Ren. <laughs> Thank you, Tita. Um, I think I just got horse traded. You do have a way with the ladies, Estelle. Well, that leaves the two of us, Tita. How about I show you a few tarot card games before we settle in for the night? Okay. I feel like Ren is about to drop a bombshell. Like she's gonna pull a knife on us or something. <laughs> and be like, all right, spill with the secrets or I'm gonna cut your guts out. <laughs> oh, wow. This room isn't like the one I stayed in with Papa and Mama. <laughs> There's a big building outside the window. I think this is probably the same room that Estelle and Joshua had. Oh. Yeah. Remember this. Miss Estelle? What's wrong? Uh, nothing, really. More importantly, I'm sorry, Ren. We couldn't find your papa or mama today. It's okay. Papa and mama promised they'd come and get me. You don't need to search so hard. But... Papa and Mama are very good at hide-and-seek. Not as good as me, of course, but still good. So I don't think you'll find them very easily. <laughs> Is that right? Well, I won't try so hard to find them, but only if you're okay with it. Yeah, it's okay. It's for the best. But never mind that right now, I have two big favors to ask of you. Oh? What's up? <laughs> Uh-oh. I can't tell you unless you promise to do them ahead of time. Dude, like this is a, uh, like the way Ren's portrait right now is actually making me nervous. Yikes, did your papa teach you to drive a bargain like that? Okay, sure. If it's something I can do, I promise I will. Really? Yay. The first thing is, can I call you Estelle from now on? Uh, huh? Call me, oh, you mean drop the whole miss part. Yeah. Tita gets to call you Estelle all the time, so I don't want to have to call you Miss Estelle. <laughs> Is that right? Alright, I don't mind. I never stood that much on formality anyway, and it's not like I'm your teacher or anything. So you really don't mind? Estelle. Estelle. Oh, I love it! <laughs> Glad you like it. Call me Estelle as much as you want, Ren. Yeah. It's really weird in English, but I'm sure dropping Son or whatever she called her from her name made a lot more sense in Japanese. Like, there's what, a five-year difference between them? There's no way, unless Ren were raised really properly, she wouldn't call her Miss Estelle with that little of a difference. Okay, Estelle. <laughs> that makes me happy. Aw, that's good. So, what was the other thing, Ren? <laughs> Spill the secrets and I won't have to cut your guts out, <laughs> Estelle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, can you tell me why you were so surprised when we came in the room? Uh, see? I don't know, dude. Okay. What I'm thinking... Estelle picked up on that. I really feel a Ren. Ren picked up on that. And that Estelle probably couldn't have looked somber for more than a split second. She seems incredibly... Incredibly sharp. Sharp in the same fashion as a certain other preteen assassin that we know about. I don't know, dude. I think there might be some parallels between Ren and Joshua. You had this really sad, lonely look on your face. I want to know why. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. See, I've actually stayed in this room before with someone else. Stepping in here just reminded me of him. Really? Was it your lover? Was this your love nest? <laughs> uh, not quite. He's someone I've known for a really long time. And we've gotten very close, but, well, it's complicated. If you're familiar with any piece of Japanese media in like the last five years, you know we were doing it even before they were. We're not together right now, though. Oh! Well, what kind of man is he, huh? What's his name? What does he look like? Yikes, questions. 
Dude, Estella's giving up all sorts of information. Ren's just lapping it up, dude. She's like, yep, let me get my notepad out. Joshua, black hair, fellow Ouroboros Enforcer. Uh, I mean, uh, Ouroboros Enforcer. His name is Joshua. He has black hair and amber eyes, and he's pretty handsome, I guess. Actually, you'd really call him more beautiful than handsome, really. Huh? Beautiful? <laughs> Let's just say he made a great princess in a certain play. In fact, it looks amazing on him. Wow, that sounds fun. Can I meet him? When are you seeing him again, huh? I don't really know, actually. Oh. You don't know when you'll see him again, and that's why you looked sad, right? Sort of, but I'm okay. I'm going to find him and drag him back home, even if it takes years. But why did you seem so sad? Well, because I'm sure Josh was off somewhere, in way over his head, and I can't do anything to help him. That makes me sad, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Ren. This must be pretty boring since you don't know Joshua at all. No way! It's neat. Joshua is a really wonderful person, huh? Wonderful? Actually, right now I think he's a bit of a jerk. I mean, talk about selfish ways of saying goodbye, taking my f first... Hmm? First what? What? Uh, nothing at all. Okay, yep, I'm all tired. Time to go to sleep. Hey, no fair! I'm not going to sleep until I hear the whole thing! Boy, I messed that one up. After that, Estelle and Ren went to bed, but remained awake for a little while talking about various things. Eventually, once you could hear nothing but Ren's slow, peaceful breathing, Estelle gave in to the exhaustion which had been piling up on her eyelids and fell into sleep herself. Okay, yep. Oh, this must be what Josh was up to. Huh. Abandoned mine. This is near Relent, isn't it? I'm assuming these are those three siblings. Or who knows, they might be... Oh! <laughs> Bingo! Yup, looks like we found our rats. So they're holed up in the old mine, huh? Not a bad spot, all things considered. This is where those Sky Bandits kept that ship they hijacked, right? Think so, yeah. Estelle and her team ended up fighting the bandits in the big central hollow a bit further in. A nice big open space, huh? I bet our guys were in the same spot. So, what do you think? Going for the heroic charge now, or...? Yeah, we don't have time to contact anyone. No heroics, though. At least not yet. First, we sneak in and take a look at how many men they got in there. Right behind you. Alright. Uh... Nice. But they're probably gonna... I have a feeling this is going to be where Josh was posted up at the moment. But they're going to come out guns blazing, dude. That's weird. This is definitely their hideout. But where the hell is everyone? Yeah, we totally tracked them here. I'm sure Joshua knew they were coming. So where'd all those intelligence weirdos go? Oh! This is intelligence division they're after? Hmm. They might have figured out we were on to them, but... Ah, screw it. Let's have a look around. Seems dangerous. Oh, there's literally no one there, I guess. No good. This place is an empty shell. Do you see anything, Agate? Not a friggin' thing. Can't even tell if they're just out or if they ditched the place or what. Not even any clues as to where they went. Um, about that, I didn't find any mention of where they were going. But I did find this over in that tent. Oh, hey, let me have a look. Hmm. Or... Orgville? The hell is this? These are blueprints of some kind. Looks like it's for something called the Orgeal. It looks like a vehicle of some sort. Ooh, Orgeal! That sounds cool! What is it? Some kind of airship? I can't really tell. Seems a bit small for one. What the? What's wrong? There's some kind of note in between the pages. I've sent out the invitations. I've got the table and chairs ready. Everything's ready for the tea party. Now all I need is to bake some crumpets and wait for the guests to arrive. 
Aw, tea party. That's really cute. So it was Almothea. It's like something out of a storybook. Hmm, some kind of code, I guess. The hell does it mean, though? Tea party? Gotta be some kind of... It's sort of weird that they don't know that pact signing is going on. Scatter! Uh, whoa! No way! How'd they sneak up on us? Huh. Those are some serious stealth skills, guys. That another trick you learned from Lieutenant Red? They've got nothing to say to us. Wow. Um, Agate. Yeah, I see it. There's something wrong here. Okay, faint to a side, crush one corner of the triangle, then we'll take out the rest. You ready? Leave it to me. Go! Okay. Do I have to fight? I've got to do this fight as them? I... I was not expecting this. It can't be too difficult since we've got no freaking control over anything about them, though. Wow! I was literally thinking, I'm glad we don't have to do this fight, but... <laughs> what kind of items do they... Oh, they've got nothing. Um... Okay. Special Ops Soldier, a ranger equipped with an orbital gun, highly trained, uses marksman crafts. Special Ops Soldier, dual claw former ID member, highly trained and skilled in a variety of moves. And then, same here. Wow, they've got no HP! Or at least this one's got no HP, so let's start with this one. Chain 2, Draguna Edge... A spiral edge AP AT delay CP plus 150 max health minus 70 yeah god like but we are going to need her to heal him though art Tira all right so this uh yep let's not waste any freaking time dude we can get all three of them. Let him have it, dude. Almost dead, all three of them. And then... 685. Yeah, they couldn't make this battle too freaking difficult. But hopefully she... Nah, she probably won't. Yeah, we're good. Um, art... What do we have here? Um, she's not gonna move in time to do any much of anything else. Okay, but we can't. Oh, we can't even have him tag in on that. Slashes the enemy with chaotic sword strikes, vacuum blade, fallen leaves as an AT delay. No pedal dance. No sword wind slash. Okay. Let's do it this way. Got one of them. Shadow weaving. And this next one is going to be strength upped. Dang, he might go down. Uh-oh. All right. Um. Do we have anything that strikes in a line? No. Art. Okay. One aerial should actually finish them off. If it doesn't, we're about to lose, but I doubt... I, we can do more than 300 damage per, I'm sure. It's not like we have Zine using it. Yep, there we go. Sorry. Oh! There was XP to be had. Oh well. What's with these guys? I mean, we beat them, so whatever, but that was a strange fight. Do you think they were on drugs or something? Mind control drugs. I remember hearing they used something like that to control some thugs in Ruan, I think? No, that was different. This... This was like hacking at a stone, or... Ha <laughs> ha! What great fun! I'm sure this is Campanella. You two aren't half bad, are you? What a treat! Yep. 
Mr. Fool himself, you. <laughs> I am Enforcer Number Zero, Campanella the Fool. I am but one hand of the Society of Ouroboros. Uh, Oro! Finally decided to show your face, huh? Just what's your scheme, anyway? What the hell are you planning on doing with what's left of the intelligence idiots? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm afraid I'm a little more than ob uh, I'm afraid I'm a little more than an observer this time. You're asking the wrong person if you want details about the plan. In fact, I barely know them myself. An observer? The hell? Anyway, if you want to attend that tea party, you'd better hurry. I'm not quite sure where it's being held, but it isn't here. Or shall we share some coffee instead and enjoy the dawn together? Ugh. Um, kid, you look pretty young. Are you really part of the society? I don't mean to be insulting or anything, but you might want to get away from them. They're bad people. You're very kind, miss. But, you know, it's okay to laugh at a fool. That's what he's there for. But worrying about the fool? Now that's quite rude. Huh? What? What? How the hell? We beat them senseless! Ah, uh, you bracers really are naive. If you really want to defeat someone, you have to break them into pieces. Like so. Wow! Shit! Ah! You little... Y you... That's... How could you? <laughs> Did I surprise you? It's so easy to break even a well-made toy, isn't it? But I'm afraid that's the end of the full show for tonight. Farewell! Hopefully I can give you an encore someday! Get back here! Wow, dude. Were those, like, golems, or were those actual people? Because people don't break like that. At least... I mean, maybe he did something to them? <sighs> I get... Um... I... I know. Wow, dude. Beyond effed up. They weren't guilty of any crime so bad they deserve to die like this. Okay, so I guess those are how real human beings explode. We can't leave them here. Just laying around. Hey, go kill some time somewhere, alright? Kid like you doesn't need to deal with this. I'll take care of it. But... but... What? The hell? Um... Agate? I think this arm is... fake. You're kidding. So they are golems. Gears, springs, quartz fragments. These things are... Archaisms. Orbital machines capable of independent action. Okay, this is probably Joshua. But, uh... That, I have a feeling... Okay... So Campanella the Fool is behind it, and whoever those people are, they're not Ren's actual parents. Ren might be an archaism herself, but that's what's going on with them. Oh, Father Kevin! What? And who are you? Don't worry, I'm no enemy. I'm Kevin Graham of the Septian Church. You're Agate Krosner and Annalise Elfied, right? I don't suppose you'd be up for swapping some stories, would you? Wow, dude. There is a lot going on! Holy crap! But man... Okay, so Campanella is making a bunch of fake people. And that's it. That's why Ren is so anxious. So she... Ren is a double agent. Ren's not even real. Ugh! Okay. Kyle, you're up! Here I come. Josette! Okay! Joshua! Whoa! There it is, Black Fang. Okay. 
So they're out just doing stuff. Ha! Huh. Impressive as always, Joshua. You three were impressive too. We defeated them in a single sweep thanks to your combo attack. C cut it out! Flattery will get you nowhere. This is like the tenth group, isn't it? How many more do we need to hunt down? Hmm. This should be enough. The Royal Army should move soon, so it would probably be best for us to disappear. Right then. Still, just what is the society trying to do? Why use these dolls dressed up as Richard's goons? That's the real question, though. Where are the rest of the intelligence men? They've probably gone to the tea party in that note. The dolls are likely to distract the army from that and make them think Richard's men are still active here. Makes sense, I guess. Wish we knew what the hell the tea party was. Well, we don't have that much of a reason to help, but... Sure you don't want to crash that tea party? <sighs> the Bracers should be investigating that camp by now. We can leave it to the army and the guild. Yeah, we left them the note and plans. That'll be more than enough. Ah, so Joshua planted that as a helpful hint. And we're taking care of all these freaking puppet things while the guild's busy. We can just leave the rest of that airhead in her group, right? <sighs> um, sorry. Didn't mean to pick at an old wound or anything. No, you didn't. They have nothing to do with me anymore. Once the tea party begins, the army will be focused on that. We can move once that happens. Right then. Time to get busy. Crap, dude. So today... Today is gonna be ten times more eventful if that night was anything to go by, dude. Everybody and their grandmother. The next day, Estelle went to the Irby Royal Villa to give Sid the report on the letters. It's gonna start us off here? Wow, dude. Not even a chance to check for any, like, uh, guild assignments? Oh, but we do get another opportunity to fish there, so... That's definitely what we're about to do. Dang, I kind of feel bad. So I don't think Ren is, like, a spy up to anything no good. I just don't think she's a real person. I see. The support is very thorough. Thank you very much. You investigated this quite well. I guess... I'm still kind of miffed we couldn't find out who sent the letters, to be honest. This is more than enough information for an initial investigation. I doubted we'd uncover the party responsible for the threats at this stage anyway. If anything, this gave me exactly what I needed. Information to consider what we might need to defend against. Thank you, Colonel. So, how have your preparations been going? We finished our initial deployment yesterday. We will be using the villa as a patrol headquarters until the signing ceremony is concluded. So that's why there were so many soldiers out and about. And I'm guessing that's why there were, like, no monsters on the road over here. We conducted an extensive monster hunting sweep this morning. We'll be performing them periodically until the ceremony ends. Why, Colonel, keep doing that and you might just put us out of a job. <laughs> well, you have something of a point. Speaking of civilian concerns, about that girl's parents, the ones you mentioned yesterday... I haven't heard any reports that they've gone through any of the regional gate posts. Nuts. Nothing to do but wait, I guess. I will let the guild know the instant we hear anything. For the moment, you've done fine work with this investigation. I'll have your payment wired to the guild ASAP. Thanks, Colonel Sid. But, uh, what should we do now? You want us to help out with the patrols in the capital once we get back? Well, if you plan on staying in Gransel, I wouldn't turn away the help. I do know you're very busy with other matters, however. I won't insist on you staying. Hmm. Well, we still have Ren's situation to deal with, so we'll talk to Elnon about it all when we get back. Yes, that seems like the best idea. Sir, excuse me, sir. Something happened? Belk, what's wrong? Uh, I think Ward Officer Belk is someone we fought against in the tournament. Don't worry, these people can be trusted. Very well, sir. You've received a phone transmission from headquarters at Layston, sir. Remnants of the Intelligence Division have been sighted in the Bose region. That's not true, but we have no way of knowing that. What? You're kidding. Details, man. Explain. They were first sighted by some bracers. I'm afraid we don't have all the details on their confrontation yet. However, General Bright has ordered all army stations to stand by at level 2 alert. 
I see. Thank you, Mr. Belk. I suspect we're going to be busy fairly soon. Seems like it. Estelle, we should get back to the guild at once. Right! Colonel Sid, good luck with your patrols and stuff! Stay safe, friends. Alright, so it's just us two once more. Oh! Okay, I thought Estelle had gained 200 CP or something. But we're gonna go ahead, definitely head back to the guild, get everything in order. That's all gonna be next time though, so join me then for more Trails in the Sky 2nd Chapter. Bye for now, guys.